Alright, so real quick, black guy dipping. 528 hertz, pure tone frequency. This is this battery's gonna die. I have to try to replace the batteries. These batteries are old, they're not charging right or something, bro. I gotta buy a whole new set of batteries, man. A friend who gave me the opportunity to be on Netflix distribution deal, he wrote a book, a novel, and uh, he gave me permission to read it, gave me a free copy of it, gave me permission to read it on camera, so we're going to be coming in and doing this one. It's called The Hearts of Men, and uh, his name is Zoe Lords, right? Zoe Lords, he's from Miami, Zoe Pound, right? You know what I'm saying? So Hearts of Men, Seven Deadly Sins, it rhymes, that's cool. Zoe Lords, right? Boom. Uh, copyright 2021. This book is a work of fiction. Names, characters, places, and incidents either are products of the author's imagination or are used fictitiously. Any resemblance to actual events or locales or persons, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. All rights reserved, including the right to reproduce this book or portions thereof in any form whatsoever. For information against, for information address, Guns and Butter Publishing LLC, Guns and Butter Publishing .com. For information about exclusive discounts for book purchases, please contact Guns and Butter Publishing LLC at amen at gunsandbutterpublishing.com. Cover design by Patrick Etienne. 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 The Hearts of Men's Seven Deadly Sins. Chapter One. There he go, right there. Cholo stated, swinging his mat, black on black Cadillac XLR into the empty space alongside the curb. Yeah, that's that fool, he muttered to himself as he shut off the engine and got out of the car. His stick man was right behind him. Who he thinks he is? Rico Suave or something? Holmes at like he too sexy for his clothes and shit, Flacco G joked, chuckling aloud. Cholo shook his head, smiling despite his intentions. Shut up, fool, before this motherfucker hears you and makes us have to kill his dumbass. The seriousness in his tone is tense and menacing as a junkyard dog. He didn't need his trigger man slipping, especially at a time like this. He had too much riding on the success of his mission. There was no room for errors, no time for games. You strap, Trello asked, to fishes breathe water, Flacco G replied. Don't do nothing unless I say so. Cholo quickly added, as they made their way up the strip, it was time to show the big homie he could hold his own. As they were walking up to the nigga they had come to see, Cholo couldn't help, Cholo couldn't help but wonder what type of joker went by the moniker Sugar Sweets. <laughs> Either you were a fruit pop or a pimp. It didn't take a brain surgeon to know it was obviously the latter. Judging by Sugar's money, Green Teller's suit, his matching crocodile shoes, and the icy jewels dripping from his neck, wrist, and fingers, Cholo knew this was the man he was looking for. He was a walking billboard, a spectacle for sure. Despite being under the dark cloud, smothered full moon, Sugar's jewels managed to sparkle and glare as if someone had scooped several stars out of the night sky and strung them around his neck. Sugar Sweet's pieces shine like a lighthouse. The chunky nougats of diamonds look like crushed ice for real. His charm was of two serpents wrapped around a two-edged sword. I ain't no dick rider, but I ain't never been a hater either. Son rocking that shit well, whispered Flacco. Cholo wasn't trying to hear that shit and shoots his trigger man a look that spoke his mind. Flacco begrudgingly zipped it. Truth was Sugar's neck, truth was, Sugar's neck alone held 80000 to $100,000 easy. People Got robbed and killed for stunting so hard, and yet here he was on the strip, macking on a bitch. That within itself said a lot. He had respect. Enough said. Sugar was a get money nigga. Cholo cleared his throat, putting as much base and authority he could muster up in his voice. He made his presence known. Excuse me, Mr. Sweets. Excuse me, Mr. Sweets. It's Cholo. You told us to meet you here. What's good? He announced boldly. His word dripped with testosterone. When Sweets failed to answer in a timely fashion, Cholo felt he was being ignored. Just when Cholo was about to readdress the situation with a little more authority, Sweets threw up his index finger, signaling to hold with a dramatic elegance that almost looked practiced. I know this nigga didn't, Cholo thought, 
fuming to himself. However, the simple gesture did the simple gesture did exactly what its perpetrator intended it to do. It made Chola wait, stop, and pause on whatever he was thinking. Sugar Sweet spoke. Cholo remembers the first time Sugar Sweet spoke to him, it caught him by surprise. Cholo had always expected, assumed a pimp was supposed to have a weak, feminine, bitch-ass voice like the ones portrayed in cinema. That was not the case here. This nigga shit thundered. He sounded like the late, great Barry White. Practice what you preach. His voice could put weak-minded bitches in a trance. And... It had a hypnotic quality to it. It had a hypnotic quality to it. Y'all gangsters is excused for the interruption. Nevertheless, you players gonna have to hold up and allow me to finish up this here little piece of business. I'll be with y'all momentarily. Just as nonchalantly as he spoke those words, Sugar returned to his prior engagement. This, in turn, infuriated Cholo. His temper was at a slow burn. The motherfucker didn't even have enough respect to turn and face him as men did when speaking with one another. Cholo was heated, damn near hot. He let out a deep, uneven frustration. He let out a deep, uneven, frustrated breath. Niggas had died for much less. One word, one word from him, and Flacco G would light him up like fireworks on the 4th of July. But this was business. He would have to remember not to take any of this personal and keep his ego in check. His set king, Chico Black, had warned him his set king, Chico Black, had warned him to put all personal feelings aside and get the job done. Cholo stood alone. Cholo stood there, facial expressions void of emotions, stone faced, thinking. His main man, Flacco G, stood next to him, ready for whatever. Chico Black had told him what was at stake. Not everything could be revealed to Flacco yet. But he was assured on completion of the mission, he would get his own crew and be promoted to set king. Cholo was all for it. True indeed, he would have done it regardless of the incentives. He was a writer for the cause. He was willing to lay down his heart. After Chico Black told him that his mission was for the furtherment, expansion, and ultimately the strength of their organization, it was enough said. It was, if it was beneficial to the family, Cholo was down, point blank. If it meant he would have to follow Sugar's instructions, so be it. He would suck up his pride, no matter how much he pissed him the fuck off. There was no telling what he could learn if he waited, what he could gain. Cholo wasn't trying to ear hustle, but he could overhear Sugar Sweet's game in the broad. Sugar's mouthpiece was like an M16 assault rifle. He was spitting fly shit into the honey's ear in rapid succession. My nigga was coded in the flu. His words, deadly. Yeah, he could definitely learn a few things, Cholo thought to himself. His gaze drifted and settled on Sugar's jewelry. Shit now that he came to think of it, there was an earning potential too. There was earning potential too. A string of different ideas wove and tied themselves into the fabric of his thoughts. He would take a new interest in his situation. He wasn't mad anymore. Hell, there were plenty of earning opportunities he hadn't Hell, there were plenty of earning opportunities he hadn't thought of until now. End of chapter one. This battery's gonna die, so he's gonna stop right now. How did you all like that as far as the actual story and the actual content, right? And then how did you like it as far as like my reading of it? I haven't read the book yet. I told him I was gonna read it on tape. That way I, I know I would get through it, making it. Yeah, I'm an artist, so I have to incorporate it in my art, or it's probably just not gonna get done. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want me to clean my room, I'm gonna have to fucking like make a documentary and me cleaning my room or some shit. You know what I'm saying? To, to really do the shit. So,